So I'm just gonna record the intro of the video while Cubase is loading. It's gonna take a little bit because it's a big template. But today we're talking adventure hero type of sound. And we are talking, we're watching this movie and all of a sudden Captain America comes in and... This sound or a very similar one that I heard in so many movies as a kid is literally the reason why I wanted to become a film composer or maybe even got me started in the composing path. And at the beginning, when I hear this big brass, I thought, well, advanced composition and orchestration techniques. Well, it turns out it's actually very simple and it's just basically four notes. So we are talking about adventure hero type of movie and we are not just talking about adventure type of movie like Indiana Jones or Jurassic Park, it's more superhero type of movie and more specifically when the superhero is doing or has done something heroic. And most of you already know this style but to quickly summarize it, we're gonna see melodies with lots of fourths and fifths, mostly major modes, we're gonna see triplets and dotted rhythmic figures. We're gonna see um, altered scale degrees, which is the flat three, flat six, flat seven, orchestrated with brass. But the question that I get most often is, I have the same libraries that you have, but they don't sound the same to me. My libraries don't sound the same way that your libraries sound. And the reason why it doesn't sound the same is because you have to treat them as a real instrument. You have to add personality to the melody that you are recording. And we are not just talking about key switches and layering a few samples. That's important and it's a great starting point but it's just gonna get us so far. We're talking about a few more things. So let's get started. All right, so this is what Alan Silvestri is doing. I'm gonna select the trumpets and the horns this is the four notes that I was talking about. So we've got trumpets and horns. Four trumpets for these two notes and 12 horns for these two notes. A split two and two, six and six. And in Cubase, here the horns and up here trumpets. Now we'll talk about key switches, dynamics and layering for brass in a second because sometimes it can get a little bit trickier than for strings and woods. But before we do that, let's talk about the three things that can ruin your library sound or can make your library not sound the way you hear them in your head. All right, so the first thing is balance. And balance is super important. If the balance is not right, then it's going to sound fake. If the trumpets are too loud or too soft compared to the horns, it's going to sound fake. And this is very hard to teach. You can teach the basics, like brass sounds louder than the strings, woodwinds generally sound softer than strings, but it's the only way to truly learn perfect balance is listening a lot of music and practicing. And in this style in particular, it gets trickier because we are trying to somehow replicate realistic orchestral sound. If we were composing hybrid trailer music, balance is still very important, but we don't necessarily need to stick to how an orchestra would sound in real life because it's not a realistic sound that we are trying to mimic. So in this style, if you've got the horns too loud, you're gonna lose the brightness that opens and enhances the sound. If you've got the trumpets too loud, then the voicing is gonna sound too thin and we're gonna lose power. So it's a fine line and sometimes it's tricky, but you have to get it right. And the best way to learn is to listen to music and then trying to replicate that with your libraries. The second thing is voicings. Very simple. Opened fourths and fifths are going to give your music a more powerful and heroic sound than just regular triadic chords. Number three is register. Too low and it's gonna sound too dark. Too high, it's gonna sound too bright. There's nothing wrong in going low or high, but understand the register and the tone that the instrument is gonna produce. Dark may work for evoking danger or for the beelines theme, but for hero, we are looking for a brighter and more open sound. So middle C for horns is for trumpets. All right, so those are the three things that you have to take into consideration before you even start thinking about key switches and layering and dynamics, all right? So voicing, balance, register. All right, so a sample library is not alive. 
is just a bunch of recordings stored on a hard drive and the piece of code that triggers them based on your performance. Now, an instrument is the same thing, right? A violin is just a piece of wood and the strings and a bow, but it's not alive. You have to grab the instrument and play it. If you are good at it, it's gonna sound well. If you suck at it, then it's gonna sound terrible. So imagine this as an instrument. Inputting the notes using the mouse is not gonna work. Quantizing at 100%, it's not gonna work. It has to be a performance. You have to play this instrument. You have to imprint the human imperfections, the good type of imperfections that make music sound good. Now, learning to play an instrument, it's going to take years to master. The advantage that we've got when we're using a sequencer is that we can repeat a take as many times as needed. We can slow down the tempo. We can record the take bit by bit. So what I encourage my students is to record the take as many times as needed. Use retrospective recording, which is an awesome feature in Cubase. Keep the last one. When you are happy, when you hear in here what you hear in your head then keep that last recording it's not even about your keyboard skills you can be a great pianist it's about i sometimes record it's, it's a one long note 10 times till i get the dynamics right so at this point you get the idea what are the tools that are going to make our library sound alive it's gonna be four things the main three things the obvious ones are gonna be dynamics key switches and layering. We're gonna talk about panning as well because it's an important one. Number one, key switches. Some libraries will allow us to switch between different articulations. For example, this one, short staccato, medium staccato, longer staccato, long note, etc. right? For example, these horns here, this line is the melody, and these notes are the key switches that are switching from longer staccato to shorter staccato to give the melody more character shorter staccatos for the faster notes and longer staccatos for the longer notes in this melody number two layering layering is having one instrument doing something and then having another instrument doing the same thing to enhance that music idea somehow. For example, we've got a melody and we're using a legato patch, but we may add a sforzato patch in the specific part of the melody to add a little bit of weight and attack to a specific group of notes. So for example, I've got these two trumpets here and I'm using a legato patch as well as an staccato patch and I'm combining both. The legato trumpets would sound like this by themselves, The staccato trumpets sound like this by themselves. So each one of these notes are going to add a little bit of weight and attack to each one of the legato notes, but especially these two are going to add definition to the ta -ta -tan -tan line. So the two patches combined now sound like this. Number three, dynamics, absolutely mandatory. There's no way that you're gonna make your library sound alive if you don't use dynamics. I've gotten a specific video about this over in my channel at Cinematic Composing. Check it out if you're interested. And number four, panning. Now, most of the libraries that we use, they are already panned. The way they got recorded and compiled, the horns already sound to the left, the violins already sound to the left, the cellos already sound to the, to the right, but adjusting that panning, open the violin sometimes a little bit more to the left, moving those horns to the right position, opening the, maybe the cellos a little bit to the right, makes a big difference. It's gonna open the sound, it's gonna create the space, which is gonna add clarity, which is very important, but panning and Taking control over panning is especially important when it comes to layering. Because sometimes we are layering with another library and while it's a similar room and a similar section, sometimes position is slightly different. And when you adjust the panning, you align those two libraries way better and they sound more as a one thing, makes a world of difference. 
and you can use a stereo panner or just the balance knob will do because the adjustments are gonna be subtle. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'm gonna share a final few tips and tricks for realism. First, a musician is not perfect, it's not a robot. Your libraries are more like a robot than a real person. So when you record these notes, make sure that they are not perfectly aligned with the grid, especially for melodic instruments and especially for slow melodies. But for percussion as well, percussion is going to be closer to the grid, but don't quantize the 100%. I always quantize at the 60%, something like that. Another one, when you have to record complex rhythms with harmonic changes in it, it which is already complicated, like this section here. What I like doing is recording the the rhythm first, so I'll use a snare, whatever it is, to get the rhythm right. And once you get your rhythm, then you can sketch the harmony, or maybe you already have it sketched, and then record the harmonies and the chords on top of that. When we are using a score editor, it's easier to write complex music. When we're using a sequencer, it's harder to see the music, to see what harmonically is happening. It's somehow easier to see the rhythms because well, it's easier to see the rhythms, but we don't see the notes. And even when we get to this view, it's still hard to see what chord this is. In a score editor, it would be easier to see what's going on and the orchestration that we've got and the harmony that's going on. I just have to look down the last staff for the double basses or I'll locate the tuba or the, and I know what's going on harmonically and musically. But here, if you've got to write something complex, let's say it's a complex rhythm with harmonic changes, get the rhythm done first, maybe on a snare. And then once you have that, look at the rhythm and you can see where those chords go and then record those chord changes. You can slow down the tempo if you need. I have a separate video about writing complex music over my channel again so link in the description so i've got a few more tips but this video is long enough the only thing that i'm gonna say is when you record those chords roll the chords a little bit don't make them perfect because it's somehow easy for you to hit four notes at the same time in the piano but four musicians in the orchestra it's four separate people it's not going to be as easy for them to play in sync so whenever you're recording chords Make sure that you don't align, don't quantize these notes perfectly. All right, so that's all from me. If you want more tips like this, make sure to check out the other videos in this series over in the Steinberg's channel. You can also check out my channel at Cinematic Composing and we have a free one hour training with more tricks and tips, writing or casual music with sample libraries with Cubase, as well as composing in different styles. So that's all, link in the description if you are interested. If you've got any questions, please post them down below. 